This presentation discusses corporal punishment as it applies to students, the law, and public schools. Corporal punishment is a form of physical punishment that involves the deliberate infliction of pain as retribution for an offense or for the purpose of being disciplined or reforming a wrongdoer. The term usually refers to methodically striking the offender with an implement. Corporal punishment as a disciplinary tool is not uncommon in the United States. It's my distinct honor to be here. This is the second time my government has called me to help. The first time was almost 40 years ago when you called me into the Vietnam War as a physician. And it was an honor to go then, and it's an honor to be here this morning as a private citizen. I am a professor of pediatrics and human development at Michigan State University. I have studied the issue of violence in children and adolescents for over 35 years, I've researched it, and I'm happy to give you not only my views, but that of, of the research which has been done over the past few, several decades. First, the definition. It's important you really realize that corporal punishment refers to the intentional application of physical pain to the child in an attempt to change their behavior. Not just paddling, it includes hitting, slapping, spanking, paddling, use of belts, use of sticks, pins, placing kids in painful body postures, not letting them move, not letting them urinate, not let, uh, applying electrical shock, a whole variety of ingenious methods. When someone's angry at someone, they come up with a variety of methods. It's also important, I think, for, for the members to understand, we're not talking about defending oneself in school if a student becomes violent. We're talking about the application of physical pain by the school official to that child in an attempt to change the behavior. In spite of many national groups, uh, of edu education and medical groups asking for the ban of corporal punishment, it continues to exist in 20 states in our country. We are one of the few industrialized countries that allows this behavior to our children. Experts note there's, there's about 1.5 million cases of physical uh, punishment occurring, as you noted in your remarks, Chairman uh, McCarthy. We don't really know exactly how many. It, it depends on how this is counted. Some experts suggest as many as 3 million cases. It's several million which occur. This results from a medical viewpoint in up to 20,000 children who seek medical attention because of, of the injuries. Instead of putting the kids into school, it keeps them out of school for days, weeks, even, even months. Now why allow, uh, uh, why not allow local control of this? Well, there's a few things to keep in mind. One is that the current study suggests that this occurs more often in, in the rural population than in the urban population kindergarten through eighth grade, as you mentioned, versus the high school, but it occurs throughout these grades. It occurs more often to the disadvantaged, to the non-Caucasian individual, to the African-American, to the Hispanic, than the middle class, upper class Caucasian individual, but it can occur through all groups. That the research also shows that the lowest incidence of this occurs in the states and the school districts that have simply said enough, no hurting of our children and banished this. Now, the advocates of this have said over the years, this is an effective form of changing child misbehavior. The testimony I leave for you, my extensive testimony, reviews the literature for you, the research that we and others have done, and the vast majority of the literature shows it is an ineffective method of correcting child misbehavior. It simply doesn't work, and it has major deleterious effects physically and mentally on these children who, to whom you inflict physical pain. Students are hurt, and we have a, a many uh, reports of abrasions, severe muscle injuries, hematomas, kids who, who have whiplash injury. We've even had kids who died because of, of, of this, 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 this treatment. There's also no evidence that, that punishment leads to improved control in the classroom. The literature suggests and shows the opposite is true. Children do not develop improved moral character. They do not increase the respect for teachers. They do not develop enhanced controls. In fact, the research is very clear that it, the opposite is occurring. These kids become victimized. They have trouble sleeping. They develop sadness. They develop feelings of worthlessness, suicidal thoughts. They become more violent, more aggressive, angry. This committee is looking at school achievement. They develop school dysfunction. They develop lower school achievement. They have a tendency for school avoidance. They drop out of school. They become malingerers. They develop recidivism. You create 
Madam Chairwoman, a paralysis of fear in the classroom. Not just the kids that are physically hit and hurt, but the witnesses. Everyone in the classroom becomes afraid. Children are victims. Children have become uh, full of trepidation. And it, it completely destroys the positive atmosphere that education is important. In order for a teacher to, to help its students, you need a positive atmosphere. And the fear of being hit or being hit leads to, to the opposite. The use of corporal punishment in the schools, and the literature on this is quite clear, falsely and perfidiously reinforces physical aggression as an acceptable and effective means of eliminating what someone thinks is unwanted behavior in the classroom and in society. The research shows very clearly it's ineffective, it's dangerous. Teachers and principals can learn and should learn non-violent means of classroom control. In conclusion, I come to you on several levels. I'm a father of four daughters. I'm a grandfather of five children. I'm a professor. I'm a researcher. I'm a Navy veteran, a doctor who served in, in the war. I urge you, on multiple levels, look at the evidence that's in the research. It's very clear. This is a rare case in my uh, clinical experience where the emotions and the research agree where intuitively you think hurting someone will, will improve them, and in fact the opposite occurs. The research shows there's no evidence that such punishment improves classroom control. It has major physical and, and mental uh, uh, impact upon our children. It doesn't improve the classroom. If, if you're looking at success in the classroom, it does the opposite. If you if I could put next to me the children from the time this country was founded in 1776 till today, I could put them right there. And all the children who've been hit and witnessed, they would say to you, please stop hitting us. We want to learn. And they would advocate for the children who are now in school today in this country and the children who will be, the millions of children who will be in school over this coming century. They would plead with you, don't hit us. Don't slap us, spank us, punch us, kick us, pinch us, shake us, shove us. Please don't choke us. Please don't hit us with paddles and belts and sticks and pins. Please don't put us in closed spaces and hurt us. Please don't use electric shock on us. Please don't give us excessive exercise drills. Please help us. So on multiple levels, both research and as a private citizen, I urge you, please, committee, protect our children and give the teachers the skills they need. And if you want improvement in the schoolroom, this is the place to start. In closing, I'm, I'm very honored to be here. And if you have questions in this regard, I'm more than happy to answer them. Thank you very much. Nineteen states in the United States still allow corporal punishment to be used as a means of discipline. The use by schools of corporal punishment has historically been covered by the common law doctrine of in loco parentis, whereby a school has the same rights over a minor as its parents. However, the only state that has laws which protect the school personnel who administer corporal punishment is Alabama. Corporal punishment has been outlawed in most uh, of Europe and in Canada, as you can see on the map, Japan, South Africa, New Zealand, and several other countries. In the United States, the Supreme Court ruling of Ingram v. Wright held that school corporate punishment does not violate the cruel and unusual punishment clause of the federal constitution. Since colonial period, common law held that educators could use reasonable force against students to maintain order. But at that time, it was in the larger context of state-sanctioned violence, such as masters whipping slaves, husbands beating wives, guards caning prisoners, etc. Today, the only two things that are legal would be parents spanking children and educators paddling students. Respect for the rights of children is growing worldwide. Every industrialized nation in the world except the United States has abolished corporal punishment in schools. Adopted in 1989 by the United Nations General Assembly, 191 nations have ratified the Convention on the Rights of the Child. Only the U.S. and Somalia have failed to approve the convention, which calls for a worldwide ban on corporal punishment. And the lady that you see speaking in here in this video 
addresses the fact that the National Association of School Board agrees with this. Did you know in nearly half the states, teachers are permitted to hit their students? And according to a report today from human rights advocates, nearly a quarter million kids got hit during a recent school year. What's especially troubling, a disproportionate number of minorities and kids with disabilities were on the receiving end of the corporal punishment. Here's Kelly Wallace. Hey, baby, Heather Porter couldn't believe it when her son Cameron, who was three at the time, told her he'd been spanked with a paddle at his preschool outside Houston. I just feel like I could, I, like I couldn't, I couldn't uh, protect him. You know, I don't, I don't even uh, spank him with a paddle at home. According to a new report, boys like Cameron are three times as likely to be paddled in school as girls. Of the quarter million kids physically disciplined across the country, African American girls were hit more than twice as often as white girls and kids with disabilities and Native Americans were also more likely to be hit. The report's authors say corporal punishment creates a violent school environment and is not conducive to learning. So when you compound that with students that are already have obstacles to getting a good education, like African American students or special education students, that really creates a double-edged sword. Corporal punishment is against the law in schools in a majority of the country, but remains legal in 21 states from Wyoming to Florida. And it often takes the form of paddling. With a teacher or administrator using a paddle like this one, opponents say it's a form of abuse, but supporters disagree and say it works. You know, they may think about doing something, but when they think about corporal punishment, that fear will make them say, no, I don't think I'm going to do that. There has been little research done on the effectiveness of corporal punishment in schools, but plenty of studies have shown it doesn't work in the home. It makes them more aggressive, more delinquent. It makes them have more mental health problems. Um, and some of these outcomes even last until, until adulthood. What? Heather Porter's son now goes to another preschool. She hopes the paddling he received will be his last. Kelly Wallace, CBS News, New York. What? In all 50 states, it is illegal to hit a prisoner, to hit someone in the military, and to, it is also illegal to hit an animal. 